Please stand. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us kneel. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, we do not presume to come before you trusting in our own righteousness, but in your great and abundant mercies. Revive our faith, we pray. Heal our bodies and mend our communities that we may evermore dwell in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We invite our children to come forward for a moment. be with you and also with you thank you thank you you know what these are keys, keys. <coughs> bless you we use keys every day don't we they're very uh, here's one that is an unusual key that's called a fob and there's a, a door on the other building and you just kind of wave that over it and it it's like magic. It unlocks the door. You don't have to stick a key in it. I like those things. They're easy to work. And we've got other keys. I want to talk about faith and keys and Jesus. Okay? Faith and keys and Jesus. The story that I'm going to read from up there today is a story about a, a Roman soldier. He's kind of an officer. He's an important person. And this Roman soldier has a servant, and this servant is very, very sick. So this Roman soldier sends some of his friends to see Jesus and ask Jesus to come and help his servant. Now, the important thing to know here is Romans... And the Jews, and Jesus was a Jew, they didn't get along together very well. The Romans were in charge, and sometimes they weren't very nice to the Jews. So, this Roman soldier had a, a sick servant, and he sent people to ask Jesus to come and help him. And on his way there, the, uh, the Roman soldier sent somebody else and told Jesus, don't even come to my house. But I believe that from where you are, all you have to do is say a word and my servant will be healed. Now, that was faith. He was trusting that Jesus could have the key to help his servant. And this Roman soldier's faith was the key to having Jesus help him. So, Faith is very important. Now, it's hard to describe what faith is except to say that faith is a gift from God. Je Jesus, we know, rose from the dead. Do we know how that happened? No. But we know it happened. And when we believe that, that's faith. And faith is a key that unlocks God's power over our lives. Okay, let's fix our hands and pray together. Everybody. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to remember that no matter what happens, our faith in you is the key that gives us your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for coming. A reading from 1 Kings. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that your name and fear you, as do your people Israel. And so that they may know that your name has been invoked in this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, declare God's glory to the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord, proclaim God's salvation from day to day, declare God's glory among the nations, and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. A reading from Galatians. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our Father and God, to whom all the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. 
But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaimed to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so I now repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of you, uh, having you do this for him. For he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. And when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. Then Jesus heard this, and when he heard it, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know the infomercials that you see on TV? The one I want to talk about is the one promising to give you a jaw-dropping, amazing body for only 48 payments of $9.95 a week. You know, it's hard not to pick up the phone and order the rowing machine the stair stepper, or whatever it is that they're selling. Because the models, those models using the equipment, they have amazing jaw-dropping bodies. And who would not want to look like they look? Well, before your fingers can dial the number, reality sets in. You think, even if I order this equipment, even if I use it every day, there is no way no way that I can end up looking like them. So, why bother? I wonder if we don't feel the same way when it comes to having a great, jaw-dropping, amazing faith. We resign ourselves to thinking only the well-known believers in the Bible or the religious superstars, people like Martin Luther or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, 
Only they could attain such high levels of faith. The rest of us, we common Christians, will have to be content with a mediocre faith, a dependable Toyota Celica kind of faith. This faith that will get us into heaven, but not the Maserati faith that's going to dazzle people along the way. Perhaps this is the thinking of the Roman centurion in today's gospel lesson. And yet it was he, an, un, an unnamed, non-Jewish layperson, and not one of Jesus' disciples. It was he who exhibited a faith that made Jesus' jaw drop. Now, what made the centurion's faith jaw-dropping? Well, it's quite simple. The centurion had an honest, God-given view of himself and an honest, God-given view of Christ. Let's take a few minutes and consider what this means. After Jesus finishes delivering his Sermon on the Mount, he goes to the town of Capernaum. Capernaum serves as his home base in the northern region of Galilee. On his way home, a group of Jewish elders from the local synagogue plead with Jesus to come and heal the slave of this Roman centurion. It is actually the centurion who sends the elders to Jesus. This tells us the centurion was not your average Roman commander. Although he is a man of wealth and power, although he would have no trouble at all replacing his slave should the slave die, the centurion shows great concern and great compassion for his slave's well-being. And this would be out of character for a Roman centurion. The elders explain to Jesus that this centurion is deserving of Jesus' help because, unlike other Romans who are dreaded, this Roman seems to love Jewish people and has even built a synagogue in Capernaum. Jesus agrees to follow the elders to the centurion's home. But before he arrives, the centurion sends some friends asking Jesus not to come into his home. Why not? Listen to this centurion explain in his own words. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not come to you. I am not worthy, he says. I wonder what this centurion is thinking about. Is he recalling some indiscretion that he had, he had made? Is he thinking about how he treated his troops last week? Is he reviewing maybe his less than holy motive for building the synagogue for which the elders praise him? Sure, other people think he is deserving of Jesus' attention, and they think that he deserves Jesus to help him. But the centurion knows better. He has a God-given, honest view of himself. He knows he's a sinner, and this is what makes his faith so great. So what is the big deal? We are all sinners, are we not? We confessed that just a few moments ago. We said we are sinners, didn't we? And this is the point of today's story. Having a jaw-dropping faith is not difficult. It is a gift from God. A gift beginning with God helping us to see ourselves as we really are. We need God's help because others around us, folks who know us, may say to us, look, look over there at John. He is such a good husband. He's a hard worker. Or they say, look at Mary. She's, she's such a cheerful mother. Or they look at some teenager and say, what a neat kid. I wish my grandchild was like that. Or the kid will look at someone else and say, that is really a wise grandparent. I wish mine was like that. After a while, it starts to be easy to believe these things about ourselves. 
like the Hollywood star who thinks she is great because her publicist keeps telling her she is. It is easy for us to think, I'm such a fine fellow. I'm such a good person. But you know, nevertheless, deep inside, we feel that our faith falls short, falls short of what God wants it to be. If you have these thoughts, you should compare yourself to the Roman centurion. If the centurion does not deem himself worthy of being in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, why does Jesus go to him? Does Jesus know of the centurion's shortcomings? Does he know the centurion is a sinner? Of course, Jesus knows. So why does Jesus help the centurion? Well, think a moment. Why did Jesus come into the world in the first place? He came because of God's love. He came because of God's grace. It is grace and it is love prompting Jesus to help those about whom no one else would say he is worthy or she is worthy. You and I are never truly worthy of Jesus' help. But Jesus does not come to us because we are worthy. Jesus comes to make us worthy. And he makes us worthy through his perfect life, his perfect death, and his perfect resurrection. Covered in Christ's blood and drenched in the waters of baptism, we are worthy and we are ready to stand in the presence of God. Because of Jesus, God the Father sees us as the person of faith we ought to be, not as we are. The centurion understands this aspect of God's grace. This is why he so boldly asks for Jesus' help. Note how the centurion trusts that Jesus does not even have to be physically present in order to heal his slave. He says in his message to Jesus, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I am also a man under authority with soldiers under me. And if I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. Yes, this centurion, this middle-ranking Roman officer, can make things happen simply by speaking a command. And he thinks, then certainly Jesus, who is true God, and under no one's authority, can make anything happen. Jesus can even heal from a distance just by speaking the word. Jesus is amazed at the centurion's faith and exclaims that he has not found faith like this in any place in Israel. What makes for jaw-dropping faith? Not just a God-given view of self. What is also needed is a God-given view of Christ. Only, only the Holy Spirit can open our eyes to trust Jesus to do what he says he will do for us. And how does the Holy Spirit open our eyes? It's done through God's Word. Our eyes are directed to God's Word so that we magnify the Lord and in the process we minimize our problem. Too often we get it in reverse. We minimize the Lord and magnify the problem. We're like the man who wanted to cross a frozen river, but he was unsure if the ice would hold his weight. So he got down on all fours and very cautiously was creeping across the ice. And when he was about halfway up across, he heard this loud clatter coming from behind him and thought, oh my, the ice is breaking. And he turned and looked, and what he found was a team of horses pulling a wagon filled with coal 
the driver whistling a happy tune as the horses pull the wagon to the other side of the river. And this man crawling on all fours felt quite foolish. This is how we must look when we creep up on God's promises. Yes, God will do what God says he will do. God will provide for your needs. God will forgive your sins. In heaven, God will hold you and your loved ones in his mighty arms. So trust God. Trust God boldly. Trust God with confidence. You may never end up with that jaw-dropping physique, but a jaw-dropping faith is not beyond our reach because such a faith is God-given, and it comes from having a God-given view of ourselves and of Christ. No, we can never deserve God's attention or God's help. But we should never despair, never ever despair, because God's word assures us that Jesus paid for our sins and now lives to give us all the help we need and even more. With Jesus on the job, our problems become trivial because the Lord our God is great. Amen.
with Christ's holy church, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, God is a strength for those who believe and the sure hope for those who doubt. Let us draw near in faith, asking the Lord to hear our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. God of Israel, there is no one like you in heaven above or on earth beneath. Keep covenant with your church and build us up as your people. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we ascribe to your glory and strength. We praise you for the glory of your creation and ask that you strengthen us to keep it and tend it as a gift and trust. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of the nations, you have bought, brought together people from many lands. Give us grace to receive foreigners with hospitality, to be good guests when we are in foreign lands and to accompany one another in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Healing God, we pray for all those who need to be made whole. We pray especially for Barbara Brown and for Cindy Conninger. We pray for your love to be felt by those who cannot be with us at worship today especially Alice Libertouille and Lucille Schwacky. Give us faith to trust that you are the presence that gives us life. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, on this weekend, we remember those who have laid down their lives in service to our nation. And we also pray for those who serve today who serve to keep us safe both night and day, especially Barry Flack and Benjamin Peace. Give us the strength to live together as a faith community in humility and gentleness of spirit, maintaining the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Shepherd God, as you have raised up servants of your holy word to tend your flock in each time and place. Send us, we pray, a faithful shepherd to lead our flock. Lord, in your mercy. What joys, thanksgivings, or concerns do we bring to the Lord today? Dwight Du Bois and his family. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you have called the saints your own. 
Gather us into your kingdom in the promise of life forever with you, Lord, in your mercy. Ever-living God, for whom no door is closed, no heart is locked, draw us beyond our doubts until we see your Christ and acknowledge him as God and Lord. Graciously accept our prayers and strengthen us to do your will through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. And when we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ.
The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in his grace. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.
Lord peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.